Good evening, calling the Lee County Commissioners to order. Okay, technical assistance is allowed. <laughs> Technology is a wonderful thing. When you get in it, it is. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, please stand and join me with the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. I pray specifically, Father, for those who are working so hard to combat this virus. I pray for your healing hand on our county and our state and our country. Thank you, Father, for your blessings, your grace. And for the fact you listen to our prayers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If I can ask that you look at your agenda. Uh, we need to add on the agenda from the retreat that we didn't get to, the opioid discussion and future services under new business, and that would be letter E. We have a budget amendment that came from the retreat. The budget amendment has to do with the parks and rec projects. And I ask that we put it under the consent agenda. And we have an annexation resolution. And I would ask that we put that under new business as letter F. Anything else to add to the agenda? Any discussions on the added items? Do I hear a motion, please? So moved. It's been moved to add to the items to the agenda as discussed. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Approval of the consent agenda. Any questions on the consent agenda? Move to approve. Motion's been made to approve the consent agenda as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. I didn't get the list for public comments. No public comments? No public comments today. Anything under old business? Nothing there. New business, tax lien advertisement for delinquent 2020 real property taxes and Mr. Brown. Good evening. Hope y'all are doing well. Tonight before you, we're before you in reference to the tax lien advertisement for delinquent 2020 real property taxes. Uh, our recommendation is to order the tax collector to advertise the tax lien for the 2020 delinquent real property taxes. Uh, each year, our office is uh, to report to the governing body unpaid real property taxes for the fiscal year, and then the governing body must order the collector to advertise those tax liens. A report of all 2020 real property taxes has been submitted to the clerk, to the board, and the county commissioners on Wednesday, January 20th of 2021 and is on the uh, commissioner's webpage also. 
The advertisements of the tax lien will be published in the Sanford Herald uh, no sooner than March 1st of 2020. The total amount of the unpaid property taxes for January 20, 2021 was $2,617,157.80. Thank you, sir. Do I hear a motion? Any questions of Mr. Brown? What is the overall percentage of the delinquent taxes? Uh, I can calculate it probably real quick. It's oh. probably less than 1%, probably. Okay. You've all been doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate I, that. I think we're somewhere, uh, as far as this year, uh, with the total uh, that we have um, from the budgeted to the lien, I think we're, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, for the amount we have that we, from the tax base that we submitted to the county commissioners and such, I think we're around 99%. Now, as far as overall what we have billed, in addition to that, the percentage is a little bit lower than that 99% at this time. But we'll work between now and the end of June to get that, um, to get the rate up and follow up on those additional taxes that are unpaid right now. Okay, sir. Thank you. A motion to consider the order of the tax collector to advertise. So moved. It's been moved to order the tax collector to advertise in 2020 delinquent real property taxes per North Carolina government statutes or general statutes 105-369-A. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Next item up. Lee County Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Master Plan. There was a lot of reading there. Yes, sir. Apologize for all that. But uh, uh, Joseph Keel cannot be with us tonight. He's still under quarantine. So, um, He'll be back to us hopefully uh, next Monday. So um, uh, just part of the deal these days. So I told him I would take care of this tonight. Uh, the Lee County Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Master Plan is a document that outlines the next 10 years for the department. It covers the entire department from parks, programs, athletics, facilities, staff, trends, etc., and is a necessary document to apply for grant opportunities. Um, the last comprehensive plan was completed in 2010. Uh, it was conducted by the um, Department of Cultural Resources. That was back in the day where you could contract with the state for them to do your plan. That is no longer an option to do that. So the state requires that you do this with an outside group. So um, Parks and Recreation Department took um, request for qualifications and is recommending Alfred Benish and Company um, in the amount of $55,000, which was the budgeted amount. Uh, their actual proposal was a little bit higher um, and we negotiated it down um, to the $55,000 that was in the budget. So um, that's uh, what we're recommending. Also, um, the group did the recent uh, cities mass parks master plans so they have a lot of data already about our parks and that's what we reminded them of and how we negotiated the contract down be happy to answer any questions any questions for the county manager regarding the parks and rec any questions do I hear a motion to approve for Alfred Benesh and company to begin working with the Lee County Parks and Rec staff to complete the comprehensive master plan for the current year? Move to approve. It's been moved to approve for Alfred Benesh and company to begin working with Lee County Parks and Rec staff to complete the comprehensive master plan. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Minter. Good evening. 
we are before you tonight to ask for an extension of our current um, audit contract with Thompson, excuse me, Thompson Price, Scott, Adams, and Company. As you know, we are required to have an audit of our financial statements each year. In April of 2015, you awarded a five-year audit proposal to Thompson Price, Scott, Adams, and Company. Um, the year ended June 30 of 2019 was the last year of that contract. You awarded an extension to them last year to do our um, June 30th, 2020 statements. And with the consideration of the pandemic that we are currently operating in, we would like to ask you to consider an additional extension to Thompson Price, Scott and Adams. They're asking for a $750 increase and that would be our first increase with them since we went with them um, six years ago. We just feel like they managed to do our audit with very minimal um, in-face interaction this year. And we feel like with a new firm, we would probably have to have a lot more face interaction and in face-to-face -face and in our offices. So we feel like in this situation, it would be a worthwhile extension. I want to ask that you consider that. I move to approve. It's been moved to approve the extension of the county's audit contract with Thompson Price Scott Adams and Company PA. Any discussions? Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the Lee County COVID-19 vaccinations. Mr. Kane. Good evening, everyone. Um, I provided a list of information as far as updates this evening to the commissioners. I do want to review a few of those. If you have any questions once we get through, I'll be glad to try to answer those um, best of my ability. Um, we have been quite busy over the last few weeks. I'm really thankful that we've gotten around 5,000 people vaccinated since our first mass drive-through event December 29th. So we're really about day 32 into this and we have right at 5,000 people that have been vaccinated and about 700 that have been vaccinated a second time. So we are uh, moving forward. Our weekly <clears throat> average is about 1,500 uh, vaccinations a week, which is really good considering the size of our clinics and what we're trying to, to maintain. Uh, we are still seeing a rise in calls, um, 65 plus and group ones as well, but we are um, as of this morning, Dr. Crumpton allowed us to open the EOC and have county staff available there to answer the phones. So today went a lot better than some of our previous days as we were able to respond back to some of the uh, registration, registrations that had been done. So we were able to work on that. Uh, I know they were overwhelmed today with calls, which is expected. Uh, there are a lot of counties around us that are postponing appointments right now because of lack of vaccine. So I do expect that number and those calls to continue, but we are still focusing on group one and group two individuals. So we have our schedule is full every Tuesday and we've started scheduling for March the 9th at this point. So we are that booked with a thousand people each Tuesday. Um, that number tends to fluctuate uh, today is a good example of that. We had over a thousand signed up to come tomorrow and quite a few of the individuals, I think about 25 to 30, um, have received the vaccine at another county. So we are making our necessary steps to fill those holes back. So we've caught contact with people directly today to fill those spots for tomorrow. We still have our clinics on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, last Friday was uh, a little overwhelming in the fact that the staff had accidentally booked instead of 50 people for one of those hours, they double booked one of the hours. So we had 100 people come through at three o'clock on Friday afternoon. Still met the need, but we did over 240, vac 240 vaccinations Friday afternoon in a three hour period. So it was really good there. Um, 
our online registration is it's working well, but it, uh, up until today, we've had a challenge in calling these individuals back just because of the time that we were spending on the phone ourselves answering the phone. So a lot of these calls are being responded to today. Uh, we've got over 2,100 that have signed on through the online registration. Uh, some of those were continuing to call as well, so it was kind of creating a challenge when we started calling some back and they had signed up online so we had to scroll through the list to find where they were, but we did work on that and got that straightened out. Uh, the state, we will be hiring through the Alliance another vaccinator this week, unless something changes. We interviewed late last week and looked really well, so that'll help us in this effort as well. I do wanna thank the um, CCNC group from the state. Uh, we reached out early and often to get assistance from the state. They provided us with four contact tracers and case investigators early on. And at this point, I've got four people in the office that are doing CVMS data entry, which is the platform the state's using. Uh, they are uh, highly motivated and doing really well. Uh, they will be out there tomorrow with us at the uh, Civic Center and will help assist in data entry as well. We actually have when it's all said and done, we have 10 extra people in the clinic area working right now that are not paid by county at this point. So we've really been blessed to find the help for that. Um, and talking to Shane late last week, some of you are aware we use the uh, code red alert today. First time public health has really used it since I've been here uh, since 2008, but it worked really well. I got two or three calls saying how well it worked, which was a good thing. Um, we'll look to use that in the future to make sure, uh, unlike last week, I had two people, had three people calling over a thousand people um, Martin Luther King weekend to get those lined up for Tuesday and that was just a lot of excess for what we were trying to do. So that worked a lot better. I do feel that uh, since the first week and the, uh, some called it, uh, I don't want to say not good, uh, we did it. We did vaccinate about 975 people that day, but I will say the first week of the event was eye-opening in the fact that we had really no volunteers to help. Um, at this point, we've got probably 25 plus volunteers that will be there tomorrow when we were there last week. Uh, we've got individuals from CAPRAC, we've got individuals from CCNC, uh, Lee County Schools, um, DHHS, and Emergency Sheriff. Management, Police Sheriff. Department, and Sheriff's Office that are assisting us. So there's 50 plus people out there when it's all said and done with this event. And it's really going well uh, the last week or so. Uh, the efficiency has improved greatly, but we did not realize, I guess, the size of what we would need when we first started. So I'm really thankful for everyone that stepped up, even the volunteers. Uh, Ms. Susan Conlon has got a group together that has volunteered, and we've had probably eight or 10 different people that have asked to volunteer, some of them nurses, which has been a good thing. We just credential them, make sure they're still approved and we can pull them in as well. But overall, it's been a great team effort. Uh, we've got another event tomorrow and got Wednesday, Thursday and Friday scheduled as well. We should get probably 1500 plus this week again, but we are moving forward and making it work. I'll be glad to I don't know if I covered everything on the bullet points, but. Um, Cover the vaccine supply. Uh, vaccine supply, we were allocated uh, five, no, 600 first doses this past week. Uh, we got those on Friday, and we were told by the state we would be getting 500 additional. Uh, so it makes 1,100 for this week. Those are second doses. We have not got those as of this evening, but I assume they'll be here tomorrow because usually we get delivery on Tuesday. But we are concerned, uh, to say the least, about the inventory. Uh, we are planning our events around what inventory we have, and at this point, we have enough inventory to cover what we're expecting. But at this point, if you do the math, is if we get 1,100 a week and we're doing 1,500 a week, we're not going to have some at some point in the future. But right now, we're, um, we're, we're okay with what we have. Us, we would not schedule the March 2nd and March 9th if we didn't have the p potential to do those at this point. So 
I'm comfortable where we are, but I am well aware that residents from other counties are probably going to call us at this point because of what's going on there. So we'll we'll make our best plan and change every second to work to get it better. Well, we're not the only county that has the same issue. We've built all this capacity. Each county has built up a certain capacity. It's almost like we're getting about half of what we really need going forward for the next two or three weeks. Two weeks, yes, sir. The, uh, I think last week the state made it known, and I received a couple of emails about it, where the state was saying that there would be more capacity coming to the counties, but the state really didn't, real, didn't make the statement that 40 counties that week previously got zero vaccine for that week. So more than zero is a blessing for any county um, moving forward. But we did get a very small amount that week. Um, but it's a statewide issue. It's probably a nationwide issue, to be honest. But we are working with what we have. And um, I did, I probably speak to the state every day via text or phone call just to get an update of, they want to know where we are. I did see in the WRAL, I think it was Friday evening, uh, the feds are allowing 81,000 more doses to come to the state, so that should put us up to past 200,000 uh, per week that will be allocated out to the county, so we will see from there. We do, that, we do have some private providers that have signed up. I think we're at five now, so that's a good thing, but we are the uh, primary vaccination clinics right now in the county. Thank you. Could you... On, on Friday, some of us got text messages from WREL asking about the uh, convalescent facilities and why we weren't helping them. And I did not realize CV, CVS and the pharmaceuticals. CVS company. and Walgreens are overseeing that. It's a federal program, and we have not received any data on those at this point. I did hear from one administrator and said their staff and the residents had been vaccinated, but that was because she was calling to inform me about some other things but we have not been privy to that information and how that works. Did not realize that was different. Yes. <laughs> it caught us off guard. No problem. Any questions? How long were the doses last? In other words, you, you said you had some. You know, at one time you heard you don't use them, you lose them. How, what, how are they, how long do they last? I mean, can we, if we don't use a certain amount a week, can we save them to next week or how does that work? We have stock currently that's frozen. Once we take it out and thaw it, we have five to six days to use it. So we will take some out in the morning around 6.30 or so, and we'll have that running for tomorrow. Um, what we do not use, we do have on site now a, a refrigerator that we did not have that first week, uh, just to keep some uh, cool, cold during the process. But um, once we pull it out, we've got two to four hours to use it or we would lose it once it gets room temperature. So we're just uh, watching what we have and pulling out only what we need. So yeah. we've not, uh, we did have a small amount wasted at the first event, primarily because uh, we had people that did not show up when we had a number, we were given a number early on to expect and we drew them up and they did not show that first event, but we have modified that practice and everything stays cold till we count cars. And when we see X amount of cars, we know exactly how many to pull. And if we have any extra, we have, uh, we can use that up within X amount of time. Good. Yeah, I came by last Tuesday and everything looked really well. Uh, thank you for watching. There's a great crowd of people out there and yeah. they're, they're yeah, very dedicated. No line, everything looks smooth. And Good job. Thanks. I got one. What type of volunteer expertise are you looking for? Medical and non-medical. Uh, what you've got, then tomorrow will change a little. Um, what we've got now is uh, runners verifying registration because there's a sheet printed out with all the names there. Okay. Uh, one person, they kind of do it as a team. One person goes with the information, goes to the car, asks the person's name, and if they can see their driver's license. Right. They provide that, that provides date of birth. We look it up in the documentation that we have. If it's there, we move them forward. We fill out the, red, they give them the registration card with that information and then just move them forward to there to the vaccination tent. 
At that point, a series of questions is asked uh, from the nurse, nurses and or volunteer nurses that are assisting us. And at that point, if they answer all the questions properly, then they're vaccinated and they move forward to the wait area, which last week was really neat because we had um, an MD and two nurses and a physician out in the um, after period holding them for those 15 minutes. And they were able to work, ask questions to them and uh, work really well as far as the staff we had. And uh, they will run uh, at the CVMS verification tent, which is the third tent. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but I've got people stationed with the uh, data entry individuals so they can run cards back and forth to get the information into the system so we can get that into CVMS and keep them seated so they can go ahead and do the work instead of having to go back and forth between cars. So we probably used uh, 10 to 12 at the registration area at the road where the sheriff's office is to go ahead and get those cars moving forward, which two six teams of two and then we used about eight to ten at the CVMS area and probably four to five nurses in the vaccination area and three or four medical volunteers at the um, after wait area. You have a volunteer number for people to call? or location? There's a form online and we put in the press release to call uh, our office and speak to Bettina and she could get that for you. But there's one online and phone number. All right. We've been really appreciative of the volunteers because you don't um, you ex you hope they'll show up, but it's no guarantee. Sometimes they can, and we did get a couple today that were volunteering with CatBrac, and they said that they couldn't come because they had been exposed. So that's been my worry, kind of from the start, is if our office is exposed, I would lose quite a few people. So we're trying to protect each other, but. I am aware in that situation that we could uh, lose a few here and there. So. Commissioner Sharp. I would just like to say that I went to the uh, second mass vaccination and from the first one to the second one, I found out that, you know, it worked way better. Uh, had someone say they had to wait like four hours and, you know, senior citizen, whatever. But I went two hours later, I was done. And so I think that was that's that's not bad at all when you got that many people lining up. So I think so one thank of the, you for what you you know, thank you for what you did. I think the first event and even the second one at the Civic Center, I think we had people line up as early as four or five AM and we were not starting until nine. So that that did create at least a four <laughs> to five hour wait for some people. Um, we did start early actually at the last few just because we did have a line waiting, but when we were originally setting everything up and trying to work through who was where and kind of the logistics of everything, um, it took a little longer to get started, but that, uh, yeah, we've learned every week, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll make a little change tomorrow as well, but it's going better than it did a month ago. Commissioner LaValle. Yeah, I have a question. <coughs> you elaborated me. a little bit on dosage, but does it seem as though we're receiving the same amount of dosage for the second dose as we did as the first? They are required to send the same amount. The of same second amount. Dose. Okay. Yes. That's, okay, that's good. I w when you were saying 1,100 and 1,500, I, w I was just a little blur blurry on that. But they have to send the same dose. They have to send the same amount of the second dose. Yes, okay. ma'am. So this week we should, if all goes well, we should get Pfizer this week. Commissioner Connect. I'm good, thank you. Sure. Commissioner Carver. I'm fine, thank you. All right, thank you, Heath. Um, if we can move right into the next item. Don't lead yet. Nope. Hey, don't lead yet. Sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. Next item is... Uh, Expertise in opioid, you know, we could, we could use right there. So we, we carried <laughs> over... that fast. We, we carried over what we didn't cover in the retreat on the opioid discussion and future services in Lee County. You um, was he prepared? Was oh, he I don't know. He might not be prepared. <laughs> but, you know, we, uh, he did, honest, he did honest, provide a couple. Of, agenda for that, so. He did provide a couple of powerpoints to us for for the meeting, and um, one was the uh, Sand Hills Opioid Response.
Consortium, which is Hoke, Lee, Mont Montgomery, Moore, and Richmond, and it showed our EMS data that, you know, since uh, September we've been going up most months on the number of EMS calls and then the number of deaths. So from, from the overdoses, we're averaging about one to two a month, and then later in the year we're up to four or five a month. Does that sound about right? Yes, sir, and I will say we've been working with Sandhills to try to get an office space for them inside the health department, and we're still uh, waiting on the contract back from them after speaking. We sent a copy, they sent a draft back, we sent it back, and it's back in their hands. So they were looking for an area to be able to set up, I think it was four days a week, I think it was 32 hours a week, but we have not um, heard back from them. It's probably been about three to four weeks, to be honest, but... That is something, uh, in reading the information, I, I was privy to see what the city council's discussion was tonight on the uh, task force they created. I saw the minutes from the last meeting, and I know that they are uh, making appointments here in Lee County and referrals, and we were one of the higher uh, counties in referrals when compared to other counties, but they were kind of jumping from venue to venue and providing that um, appointment office space. So we were really looking to try to lock them down an area, and we we should have that available if they can, if we hear back from them, and I'll reach out to them tomorrow and see where they are in that uh, contract process. But I, it was kind of a gray area at first for us because we weren't sure exactly what they were looking for, but um, we got some clarity when we had a virtual call with them, and um, Things seem to move really well and then it's kind of stopped, but I do not know what the dynamics are for their office as well as far as the, the pandemic and what's going on in, in their world either. So I'll definitely reach out to them tomorrow and see what's going on there. But. Any questions regarding the opioid crisis we're dealing with? She's going, hey, you know, are you having. Are you doing, is the health department doing any referrals? Because I was looking at this report and I was seeing, you know, referrals, but the referrals really aren't going to detox facilities or, you know, or facilities for treatment. It just seemed like they're, they're going other places. So I was wondering if you felt like that treatment was working and, and you know, what the commissioners are kind of curious as to what, what they can be doing to help try to address the situation. And that was really why it was on our agenda last week. Okay. I think uh, we're not doing referrals ourselves, but we are the, I guess, the pass through for getting them um, an area to where they could uh, have an appointment set up with people. I think that in speaking, and, and I think Whitney was privy to this call, forgive me if, if I'm wrong, but I think they were really just looking for some area to where they could um, be a constant somewhere. And I think that overall it's, it's needed, especially with this pandemic and the dynamic. And I know that I've heard Shane mention when these uh, stimulus checks came out, we had a, a spike in overdoses just from there. And I know that we're about to experience some type of stimulus once more. So I, I mean, anything we can do, I just, the information's out there. I think we probably should do, in my opinion, a bit better job of getting information out education wise because I think people tend to think a little um, nervous about possibly poss considering that option but at the same time I think that this pandemic has showed us that um, we all um, are having emotional mental health issues as we move forward during this so that need to have some body in their life that they can be referred to, I think, would help the county tremendously. It's just getting that person in the seat. So I'm all for trying to get someone there as well. And I know that with our strategic plan, that was talked about in trying to reach out to that group of people. So it kind of took a back seat, I would say, over the last three or four weeks. But we do need to reach back out to them and see where we are, because there's quite a few people hurting. And I don't, I don't like the fact of knowing they're relying on a medication to feel better slash possibly pass away. I know that the consultorium hasn't met since early November and we're planning on, it's a board that I'm on and we are planning on meeting um, in I think two weeks. So that's one thing that we can bring up in discussion is just 
our board, you know, being really interested in particularly um, maybe this office space and seeing if we can move forward in some direction with that and what else we can do. I mean, they have their own operations, but we're a strong piece of that in any way we can help. And I have heard some success stories in Hoke and Montgomery County. So I think just having that um, site set up mm -hmm. and having somewhere where they know they can go mm -hmm. would help tremendously because they are kind of jumping here and there throughout the county right now to provide that service. So I think a venue would be very beneficial right now. Steve, you happen to know why aren't they looking at Daymark facilities? I do not know exactly. I might better question for them, but I don't know that that was ever brought up. I know that they work with Daymark, so I, I would be shocked if that wasn't a consideration. I, I don't know why. Uh, that's that what my point right, is. Right, but I know that they, that's, Daymark is a huge piece of that. Um, so I don't know why they aren't a part of it, but we can find out. The other consideration would be contacting the city committee that's helping uh, promote the need and referrals, see if the city might have available space. That committee might be able to find it. And I think they're meeting tonight, if I'm not mistaken. And I think Daymark has pretty much filled up the, I think the, that the was facility kind of what that we gave them. I know at one time, about 12 years ago, they only had about four, when they, all the consolidations occurred, only, they only had about four or five people in the building but um, you know, a few years ago, they asked us if they could uh, uh, renovate the old hat gym at the back of the building, and and they did that and uh, uh, put you know, a ton of records back in there. But and then I was told that the offices were full. So um, at one time by Victoria. So I think they they I think they've got it filled up. I'm not I haven't been in the building in a long time, but we can talk to Victoria about that what they need. It's, it's just interesting as you look around, I, I sent an email to Commissioner Smith tonight that I got from um, Forded from the uh, manager down in New Hanover County and the facility that they just broke ground on and uh, you know, he knows what they're trying to do in Guilford County and Randolph County. It just seems like there's a lot going on. People are trying to do a lot of things and I think this board at least in the conversations I'm having with them, they're trying to figure out what to do here locally to help. So I was, um, I went to a meeting, uh, forgive me for not remembering the acronym, but Alamance County had done a lot of work in this dynamic. I went to a meeting probably a year and a half, two years ago with them, but they had a lot of players at the table and was really good listening to some of the things they were doing, but. I'd have to pull some more information to know exactly those dynamics, but I was really impressed with what they were doing there uh, with their, I think they had, I know they had detention area, but they also had a, a setup there where you could do some, um, I guess some kind of treatment inside the prison and things of that nature as well. So it was, it was very interesting to hear. I hadn't really thought of it from that perspective before until I heard what they were saying. Well, I'm really not interested in putting anything else on your plate right now. <laughs> but, you know, I need, I probably need to figure out a way to, you know, to talk to some of these folks and just find how, how they're doing it and how they're pulling all the money together to do it because it's quite, it's quite uh, creative and interesting as to what they're doing. Commissioner Connect, comments, questions? None, thank you. Commissioner Carver. No, I think you've covered it well. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the annexation resolution. And everyone should have a copy of it in front of them with the attached state statutes.
I'm just saying this. So is this up for a vote or just for consideration tonight or what? Uh, I have it up for a vote tonight. Beg pardon? I have it up for a vote tonight. All right. Um, a lot of these things were discussed on, on Friday with the city. Um, and I think this will help clear a lot of the issues that we have going forward. Still require, you know, um, getting their needs met in terms of if a industry wanted to get water and sewer outside a three mile area, you know, with our consent, they'll be able, still be able to do that and not hinder any type of growth issues or job issues. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just trying to narrow that down because right now it's a little bit open and that does lead, as it says in a resolution, resolution the issues that, does it, that it does create in terms with fire and, and policing. And we want to make sure that we're, we have a plan going forward, not that it just happens haphazardly. Anybody have the city's comments? I don't know what they were. I didn't hear. I, I did ask, I did ask the, the mayor at, at the meeting, a joint meeting we had on, on Friday, you know, if, if that was an issue, if we went back to the way it was in terms of within the contiguous zone, outside the contiguous zone, as long as it's for industry, they were okay with that. And he, he, he nodded and said, yeah, he'd, he'd be okay with that because that was his, his initial intent. So we're just locking that down a little bit. Okay. Would you like me to read the resolution? Oh, more than welcome. Thank you. Resolution of the Lee County Board of Commissioners in support of legislation limiting the city of Sanford enforcing satellite annexations. Whereas House Bill 285 passed by the General Assembly in the 2019-2020 legislative session allows annexation of property beyond three miles of the current city limits of Sanford. And whereas House Bill 285 does not restrict the ability of the municipality to force annexation using public utilities as a tool for annexation and is creating service issues for police and fire services within the beyond three miles of current city limits of Sanford. And whereas the law was passed with the intent of allowing the city to approve annexation for industrial developers who are interested in developing property in the unincorporated areas of Lee County to attach to the city's sewer line, which they ran to Moncure. And whereas said law is now being used to force residential developers to annex into the city limits, creating satellite pockets in the county, causing service issues for residents inside and outside the city limits. And whereas a municipal water and sewer fund is financially independent of a city's general fund, and therefore the argument that annexing property is required to compensate the city taxpayers is invalid because all investments in water and sewer infrastructure are supported by the water and sewer enterprise fund and not the general fund. And whereas House Bill 285 does not allow residential and commercial developers the option to extend water and sewer utilities in the unincorporated areas at their own expense and do not seek to be annexed by the city of Sanford. And whereas in order to facilitate economic development in the unincorporated areas of Lee County, the commissioners seek action on the issue from the North Carolina General Assembly. Now therefore be it resolved that the Lee County Board of Commissioners hereby request that the North Carolina General Assembly repeal Lee County and the City of Sanford from House Bill 285 GS 16A.58.1 and address the issue of forced annexation by municipal utility extensions. Further, the commissioners ask the legislator, legislature to impose any law necessary to ensure the fair treatment of citizens and developers who are willing to extend utilities at their own expense and to pay higher user fees by not being in an unincorporated district. And the commissioners request that the clerk of the board of the Lee County Board of Commissioners forward this resolution to the state legislative delegation of Representative John Sauls and Senator Jim Bergen. And the commissioners further request that this resolution be forwarded to the North Carolina County Association of County Commissioners, seeking that this matter become a legislative goal of the association in the upcoming legislative session. You've heard the resolution, read the resolution. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Motion's been made to approve the resolution of the Lee County Board of Commissioners in support of legislation limiting the city of Sanford enforcing satellite annexations. Discussions? Mark?
Uh, Commissioner Lovick. I'm good. Mark. Uh, the original 285 bill, is this something the city brought forward to the General Assembly, or how did this come about? You mean the amendment thereof? The amendment yeah. to it? Yes. So the city brought this forward? Yes. Pretty much saying we want to make it to where the citizen has to tie on? Is that what you're saying? I'm sorry, what was that last part? Where, where the citizen pretty much, or the business or whatever, pretty much had to tie on if they wanted to have the city well, they, services? They, they, brought it, they brought it to the uh, representatives with the, just the intent of that if a, going towards Moncure, that if a business around the airport, say for example, wanted to tie in, and the cost may be exorbitant, that they have the ability to annex them to offset the costs if need be. Though they're outside the three mile area, that would inhibit growth if they weren't allowed to. But they opened it up to where they didn't define it was just for business, which the city had asked for for business purposes. So now we're redef redefining it for industrial and business purposes, okay. that the city will have the ability to do that outside the three mile. And that's what they originally asked for. So we're just cleaning up that plan a little bit. Okay, good. Thank you. Commissioner Reeves, comments? I, I may have read it slightly different, but it seems to benefit the business that would rather pay up front yes, and get and, uh, out of the, the taxation over the next years. Thank you. Commissioner Sharp? Nothing. I don't have anything. Commissioner LaValle, comments? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Carver? No, I'm happy with this. It's, I'm, I'm glad we were able to get this worked out after that long discussion with the mayor. I thank uh, Commissioner Connect for putting it together. Any other comments? Commissioner Connect? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. You've read the resolution. I'll Motion's been made to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Next item on the agenda, commissioner's comments. If I can start with Commissioner Carver. Comments, sir. The only comment I have tonight is that we are meeting tomorrow with the uh, Board of Education and at the last meeting, we ask for any input on comments that you might want to make or issues you want to bring up. I would encourage you to, if you have any of those in the back of your mind, that you provide them to uh, the chair tonight or tomorrow morning at the latest. And um, I think obviously there's a lot of tension generated because of the issue with uh, Sherry Womack. And um, I think we just need to be, have our feet on the ground when we go in and do the best we can to uh, possibly address that, but um, trying to be encouraging at the same time because the, the goal obviously is to get through this and get back to educating children and not having so much drama. I think that's the attitude the chair has anyway. So anyway, we're specifically soliciting anything that you might mention that uh, you think ought to be discussed at that meeting. Yes, sir. Your meeting is not to discuss that issue, is it? Our board discussing whatever the issue is with Ms. Womack. I don't think that's the purpose of the meeting. What I'm saying is that there's some anxiety um, Answering your question directly, that was not the purpose of the meeting. Okay. I don't see that as being we were, a, a board business, but. We, we were focused on opening a school. What are your financial needs? I, I want to focus why you're having this meeting on teachers getting vaccinated. I don't quite understand what the holdup is on that part. You don't understand what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I, I guess I don't Chief? understand where well, that was an issue for this meeting. Mis Mr. Kane? I mean, we know that a lot of the school districts are concerned about teachers' health, and teachers fall into various categories based on their age, correct? 
if they're 65 or above, they would be a group two. Right. If they are just a teacher, whether it be at the community college or whether it be in our school system, they would be a group three. And that entails probably, I would bet, 10 to 15,000 people in the county. And the time frame on that, I think that's your question. What's the time frame on group three? Time frame at this point, best guesstimates, probably late March, early April. I'm just trying to find out if the, is the school board discussing that with you? Is that our lo local call or the state call? Who makes the call on that? We're following the guidelines based off DHHS with the groups that have been provided to us through their uh, infographic. Yes, we're following the state guidelines and uh, they actually are tracking, you know, making sure that we're staying pretty much 99% within groups one and two. So and all, um, and all they do the, have one group, um, the nurses, that would qualify to go ahead and be vaccinated if, if they were involved in vaccinating others. So And they have been vaccinated. And they have been vaccinated. So the next the next trick you were is that about when school we get nurses, to right? you were talking about school yeah. nurses. So when we get to group three is, you know, I Wait. got an email Friday that actually said that we could prioritize the group three, you know, people within group three. So that's probably the fastest way, you know, prioritizing them in group three is the fastest way to get them vaccinated. Um, and I think we're also looking at, just to be clear, we're also looking at your processing plants, your factories, your grocery stores, your local businesses, your uh, daycares, your, um, there's like probably six or eight more I'm forgetting that all fall in that yeah, category. Anything that co could qualify as essential worker. Correct. That's group three. Including group three. including county and city employees that we. That's our largest group. group we need three. to vaccinate because we have not done many of us county employees at this point. Dr. Crunton, are you suggesting you can prioritize within the education arena? Yeah, I would, you know, you know if we discuss it with uh, their leadership tomorrow, um, right. you, know, our, you know, my suggestion to them is that they prioritize their list. Yeah. And that way when we get, you know, to group three, they can tell us who is, you know, who are, who are the people that need to, to go first. Because I don't know, you know, what they're trying to do with the reopening plan. I'm sure that's something we'll discuss with them. Um, you know, how they're trying to reopen and, and that forth. But I know, I know elementary, um, I know they're on a modified schedule, but they are, the kids are going to school, but I'm not sure about middle school or high school. So um, I would suspect that the, there's, as our numbers hopefully continue to go down, um, they'll, they'll, they'll be that, uh, moment where they'll want to they'll want to bring back the high schoolers and the middle schoolers I don't want to speak for them but you know they're going to get their chance tomorrow and in a week in two weeks from tonight when we meet with them jointly as the full board so and it's a tough it's a tough issue because um, I think there's a lot of a lot of people that'd like to get the kids back in school and wish I had a magic wand I can give them the vaccine tomorrow but I don't Any other questions for who's Mr. King? Who's attending the meeting tomorrow? Myself, Commissioner Lavalley, Commissioner Carver, County Manager. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any any other input for our meeting tomorrow? Not good. Thank yeah. you. Mark, any input for our meeting tomorrow? No, sir. Not at this time. If I do, I'll text you a couple okay. of questions. Okay. All right. Continuing comments. Commissioner Connect. Everybody stay safe. I'm good. Thank you. Commissioner Lavalle. It's good to see that we're having these discussions about just the struggle with the opioid pandemic. I mean, it's a huge problem and there's effects of COVID-19 that far reach just being sick with it and um, I know our, our health department is just 
overloaded, but they're doing a great job of executing what needs to be done. So thank you. And that's all. Commissioner Sharp. Uh, just to mention that I'm continuing to get calls about trash and junk cars. Uh, not to belabor the point, but just want everybody to know that I'm getting those calls. And, um, and I did uh, get a uh, copy of the uh, Chatham County's uh, junk car ordinance that I'm looking at, and I'll go uh, get with the attorney to uh, look at that and to see if there's something that we may could do and discuss. But uh, I'll be getting with her about that. Um, and I'll just say that uh, I was pleased uh, with the work that got done on Thursday night and Friday. I think uh, it was a great meeting. And uh, just uh, thank you guys for the uh, cooperation on the Horton Park project to get that done. That's, uh, that's a big deal to me. And thank you. Commissioner Reeves. If, if it will help any, DOT announced Thursday or Friday of last week that they were cutting state trash pickup in half. That ain't him. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh -huh. I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> anything <laughs> else, anything <laughs> else, sir? I'm good. Thank you. Commissioner Lovick. Um, first of all, question for Dr. Crumpton. Is the Colon Road across from the um, industrial park is that in the city is that officially annexed now the reason i say that i got some calls on the mud coming from that new development oh uh, that, that that the uh, galvin's ridge is officially inside the city limits okay as is that entire side of the industrial park down i, I was thinking that but um, the you know the ccep with, road extension or whatever i spoke with that. a gentleman that uh, one of the City Council said you need to get it with the county commissioners. And <laughs> I was thinking it was, yeah, but uh, it is. No, that's an issue. not ours. I, that that's, was by Annex Florida. You could get that commissioner, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's been annexed for quite a while. It's been annexed for quite a while. Yeah. Didn't realize, so yeah. it's not our concern. So that's that's the main thing. But I told him I well, we don't do roads anyway. Oh, I, so I told they're either calling too, DOT or or the city. So yeah, the DMV. Yeah. Yeah, I told him that, but, you know, when you get complaints, you want to be able to yes, use as much stuff as you can to give back to them. Um, like I say, Thursday and Friday was my, myself and Commissioner Carver's first uh, retreat. Very interesting, very informative. Thank you all the staff and stuff that were there for that. And uh, really enlightening, and uh, I, I see good things we got in our you know, horizon. And, uh, you know, I know we passed this, uh, we talked about it Friday at the meeting at the retreat, but just to show how important the, uh, we moved it up to phase one in our parks and rec, of the pool for Horton and the basketball courts at uh, Temple. Temple Ballpark. And I think that's big. And I, I, I'm glad our, the board decided on that. And I think that was good for our community, good for our people to see some progress. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I too wish to reiterate uh, my thanks to the staff and our illustrious attorneys who helped put together our budget retreat. Can't say enough. It was very productive and we appreciate it. Uh, we do have some cards from individuals. Uh, first one I'll read is during a time like this, we realize how much our friends really mean to us. Your expression of sympathy will always be remembered. And Lee County Commissioners and staff, the family of Kevin wants to thank you so much for the beautiful plant you sent in remembrance of Kevin. We are really going to miss him. Thank you again for all of your prayers. That was lifted up for him, the family of Kevin Dodson. For those of you that don't know, Indira Everett is our representative from Duke, uh, excuse me, Duke Energy. And unfortunately, she lost her father, W.C. Willard Claxter Moses. There are not enough words to express our heartfelt thanks for the sympathy and the support you have offered our family during this time of loss, uh, the family of W.C. E. Moses and Indira Everett signed it. 
I'd like to read this letter of thanks on behalf of the 16,469 Lee County citizens that voted to reelect President Donald Trump. We wish to thank President Trump for his four years of putting America first. We thank President Trump for the following, which were best highlighted by Joseph Klein, for putting America first, for record tax cuts, for strictly enforcing the nation's immigration laws, for destroying the ISIS territorial caliphate that his predecessor deemed the junior varsity and killing its ruthless leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, facilitating historic Middle East peace agreements between Israel and three Arab countries, confronting China's destructive behavior toward the United States, keeping the United States out of new overseas wars while lowering tensions with North Korea, for achieving energy independence, for creating a pre-pandemic economy with historically low unemployment, including for African Americans and Hispanics, and reducing the poverty rate to a 17-year low, for putting America back on the path to economic recovery sooner than many so-called experts expected after making the decision to initially shut down the country in order to slow the spread of the coronavirus, for combating the once-in-a-century pandemic by forging unprecedented partnerships between government and the private sector and sharply reducing bureaucratic red tape in order to produce ventilators, personal protective equipment, and testing capabilities in record time, for paving the way for rapid development, production, and distribution of vaccines that can finally allow us to return to a normal life, for lowering the price of prescription drugs, for reaching bipartisan agreement through legislation giving individual Americans and small businesses an economic lifeline during the pandemic, and for spear spearheading and signing the First Step Act, which reforms the criminal justice system and reverses years of mass incarceration of African American males. We thank President Trump for exposing the media as the enemy of the truth as they ignored Vice President Biden and his family's financial ties to foreign governments. We see the media sweeping the illegal activities of the former administration, using the tools of government against their political opponents. We saw the media ignoring Vice President Biden's gaffe just a week before the election in which he said, and I quote, we have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics, unquote. We noticed the media yawned, not questioning the statement as either a Freudian slip or a sign of age onset dementia. We saw the media perpetuate the Russian collusion delusion when in fact it was false, costing the American taxpayers upward of $34 million. We supporters of President Trump now see that the media, political leaders, and social media giants are working to silence, persecute, and purge all of us for daring to elect and reelect President Trump. So much so is this hatred and animus toward those of us who voted for President Trump. Now we have our own local board of education moving to silence and purge a war veteran, Christian and patriot. We can agree to disagree. We do not have the right to silence opposing viewpoints. This is the United States, not Nazi Germany, Stalinist Russia, of communist China. Thank you, President Trump. Now, was that mailed in or was that your thoughts? That was a combination of both. Okay. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. A motion has been made to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much.